Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Savannah, I am a mobile dog groomer, and this is Jackson, a very hairy Pekingese. He was groomed about three months ago, and he's definitely needing a major D-shed, so I'm going to show you how I transform him today. While I'm getting my camera set up, I just want to let you guys know that next week I hope to have a life update where I will talk a little bit about the deleted video a couple weeks ago, but this week let's keep things happy and positive and let's groom Jackson together. So before we start on the groom, I just want to preface this by saying this is just how I groom Jackson. This isn't necessarily how you have to do it. Every groomer has a different style and way of going about things. Just wanted to let you guys know that. So before I pop Jackson in the bath, I'm going to take some time to do a little bit of dematting in areas where he's got lots of undercoat and it's starting to get really tangled and heavy mainly behind his ears just so the shampoo can get down to his skin and clean all of his fur properly. Once I got the bulk of the heaviness out behind his ears, I noticed in his sanitary area where he goes pee, there was a mat there. So instead of trying to bath through that, I know I'm going to have to shave it anyway, so I'm just quickly kind of shaving that area for him. Jackson is now in the bath and today the shampoo I'm going to be using on him is the 50 to 1 Gentle Clean High Concentrate by Eye Groom. I'm going to be putting this in my spray nozzle which works in place of a bathing system. It's from Amazon. I absolutely rave about it. The link will be down below. So this just gets screwed onto the nozzle. I quickly shake it up to mix it with the water and then the shampoo and water is going to mix and spray onto him. The pressure is great. I love it. Also showing you guys that I am using the de-shedding and detangling conditioner from iGroom. Right now I'm checking the temperature before I start shampooing him. Something else I love about this nozzle is that there's a dial on top so you can actually switch back and forth from soap mode and just water mode. So you don't have to take off this nozzle to rinse off the pet. Now I'm going to speed up this process here, but he's getting two shampoos and also a conditioner. I let it sit for a little bit and then he gets a very thorough rinse before we move on to the dryer. Before he goes back on my table, I am cleaning out his ears with the Nature Specialties Ear Cleaner. I absolutely love the scent of this stuff. I find that it cleans really well, especially very greasy ears. And then I'm actually going to be popping some cotton balls in his ears. If you can't tell, he's an older guy and he doesn't like the dryer and also suffers with dryer seizures. So I'm going to talk about how I prevent him from having them while I'm drying him. So fresh out of the bath, he has cotton balls in his ears. I am also going to put a happy hoodie to help dampen the sound of the dryer even more. This also helps to dry his head and ears while I'm working on the rest of his body. I'm going to be using Quicker Slicker on him by Nature Specialties to help 
reduce the dry time. I actually prefer the Magic Spray by iGroom, but I'm completely out, so I might as well use up this other product that I have. Now, talking about reducing dryer seizures, nobody is super certain why this happens. I notice that it happens with older dogs or very anxious dogs. I think it might just be a panic attack that happens from the sound, or maybe it is something neuro neurological that gets triggered in them. But how I prevent this from happening, the cotton balls, the happy hoodie, and with him, he seems to only be able to tolerate short periods of the dryer. So first, I get rid of the excess moisture all over his body, and then I'm only going to dry one side of him 100%. It is winter, so I make sure that it is nice and warm in my van, but only one side is going to get dried 100%. I'm going to groom that side of him, then the other side of him is going to be dried 100%, groom that side, and then lastly, I am going to do his head. Because to fully dry his head, I have to take off the happy hoodie, which is going to let in more sound even though he still has those cotton balls in his ears. So I keep the happy hoodie on him until I absolutely have to take it off. And often he goes inside with slightly damp ears and his parents know that. As you can see, we're getting a lot of fur out of Jackson today. His full groom took exactly two hours. He was last groomed three months ago and to reduce the stress on him, the amount of work and how long he is in the van, we rebooked him for next time in two months, which I think will be a lot better of a time frame for him. Let's move on to nail clipping and dremeling. As you can see, they definitely need to be done. These are the medium size orange Miller's forge clippers. I love them, they're nice and strong. I also have the large pair as well. Look at how furry his Grinch feet are. <laughs> The angle of this clip is not ideal, but I am now using my wireless Dremel from Amazon, the Tozy, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, I've talked about this a lot, but I absolutely love it. It's got the diamond bit. I have a love-hate with the light. The light is helpful for white nails, but not helpful for black nails. As many of the products that I can, I will be linking down below. Before we move on to trimming him, I am using this D shedding comb that I absolutely love from Ren's Pets. I didn't know how much I needed this in my life, but I did. It's also very affordable. I am going to be going through this whole side of him line brushing. What line brushing is, as you can see, you slowly go up in layers of the hair. I think that's the best way I can describe it to make sure I'm getting out all of the undercoat and tangles. So I'm going to do that on this whole side of his body before I start trimming any of him. I am now using a five blade with my clipper vac just to get off the bulk of his very grinchy feet before I go in to trim them. And then I'm also going to be trimming his pads with a 30 blade. My camera angles in this video are very awkward, but it's hard to set up my camera while also just trying to get the dog done in a timely manner. So I've actually ordered a new kind of tripod that I'm hoping will help me get new angles in the next video, I hope. Now using a guard comb over a 30 blade just to kind of help set a length before I start scissoring his legs. Thank you. 
If you have watched any of my grooming videos before, you'll know I always go over my work with thinners after I scissor. I just personally love a very natural look on dog's fur. I talk about this a lot, but if you're not sure if the dog is going to move their feet while you're trimming them, or if you're a beginner, keep their paw on the table. It's going to be less likely that you're going to cut them. When you're holding it up like this, if they move, you could cut their pad. Just a heads up. My favorite technique is to take my fingers and pull up all the hairs in between the dog's toes. Then I take my slicker and brush it up even more and then I trim all of that fur that's sticking up to get a nice smooth paw and then once again I'm going to go over it with my thinners to blend everything. Moving on to his next side, you can see that I am now fully drying this side before I do any trimming, etc. I am now going to trim up his bum. I have also removed the happy hoodie as I'm done drying this side just to give him some airflow on his head, give him a break, and try to get his head drying a little bit before I put the dryer on it. So right now I'm just kind of taking off the bulk with a guard comb before I go in with my shears and my thinners to create the shape that I want for him. So you can see a little bit better now. I do this thing where I grab the dog's tail and the one leg, lift it up, and then that's how I get the inside of the opposite back leg, if that makes any sense. You can see he's trying to wag his tail. Such a sweet little boy. Honestly, I just spend lots of time going back and forth between my shears and my thinners, getting it to the length and the shape that I want. I also usually trim in by his bum hole to make it nice and short in there, usually just with thinners to keep a natural look, like I said. And then once we're done the bum, we are going to trim his tail. I love taking the tail and shaking it a little bit, holding it in all different kind of directions and different heights to get it as even as possible and to lay as naturally as possible before I trim it. So now we are moving on to drying his head and brushing out his head. I am going back and forth between brushing and using the dryer so that he gets breaks. I don't do a ton of trimming on his face area. We leave it quite natural, but right in by his eyes, I use the thinning shears to take out the bulk there. I'm now taking off a little bit of length on his ears and his chest, blending it into his belly, making everything look smooth and natural. Now I'm just showing you guys how much fur we got off of Jackson. This isn't even all of it. He definitely had lots of packed in undercoat. And as you can see in the clips, I had lots of fur all over myself and my hair, dropped the camera. So this is Jackson's before and I will let you guys enjoy his after.
Thank you guys so much for watching today. All of the love and support. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.